Hey, it's AT time. My name is Ron Freeman, and today on Animation Trainers, we're going to be talking about why there has to be some level of exaggeration in almost any animation for it to be successful. And to make sure that you don't miss any of the other videos that we post here on Animation Trainers, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and switch the notification bell to all. On November 10th, 2004, the film The Polar Express was released in theaters, directed by Robert Zemeckis. At that time, Zemeckis was one of the most successful and respected directors in the entertainment industry, having been responsible for films like the Back to the Future series, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Forrest Gump, Death Becomes Her, Contact, Cast Away, and a slew of other successful films. Everyone was excited about the Polar Express because it was based on a popular holiday children's book, and besides, with that kind of pedigree, how could it fail? When the movie was released, the response from audiences and critics alike was unenthusiastic. People spoke of an unsettledness when watching the film because of how the characters emote and express themselves. Some said that there was a deadness to the eyes or something, and the phrase uncanny valley started becoming associated with the film. Robert Zemeckis has always had a passion for experimenting with what film can do and telling stories in new and interesting ways. And that tradition continues with his upcoming film Here, starring Tom Hanks and Robin Wright, in which the entire film takes place from a single vantage point. I am very excited to see that movie and have always been a fan of Robert Zemeckis and his films, but especially his bravery and willingness to take a chance. We have never gotten anything great in this world from someone creatively playing it safe. For the next seven years, Robert Zemeckis would remain committed to motion capture for animation by producing and or directing films such as Monster House, Beowulf, A Christmas Carol, and Mars Needs Moms. In all of these films, that sense of uncanny valley continued to permeate the films to varying degrees, and audiences generally did not respond all that favorably. However, the most palatable of those films is widely considered to be A Christmas Carol, starring Jim Carrey. I do not think this by any means is an accident, and I'm going to explain why in this video. An animated character is almost always somewhere between mostly realistic and extremely broad and cartoony visually. And I believe that there is an inherent correlation between how exaggerated something looks and how exaggerated something should move in order that it feel good to us for the animation to have that thing we refer to as appeal. Which is the twelfth in the twelve principles of animation, and we will be speaking about it in the future video in that series. So if you want to make sure not to miss that, you can access and subscribe to the playlist by clicking here. A film like Gore Verbinski's Rango is an interesting example of realistic visuals mixed with subtle exaggeration being successful. That film was produced and animated by Industrial Light and Magic because the director had been working with the company on the Pirates of the Caribbean films and was interested in making an animated feature film. Because Industrial Light and Magic and their artists were less experienced in creating things that look exaggerated, and in fact are actually famous for making things that look real, it was a challenge to consider how the character should look and move. And so they decided to lean in to making things look as realistic as possible, because that's what they knew. But even with this in mind, because the characters are anthropomorphic and act human, they made sure that the movement had a minimum level of exaggeration even though based on copious amounts of video reference. The actors portraying the characters and shooting the video reference intentionally were exaggerated in their movement and behavior, much like someone along the lines of Jim Carrey. I believe that the reason Jim Carrey playing Ebenezer Scrooge was successful in Image Movers Digital's adaptation of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol is the fact that Jim Carrey naturally is extremely broad and dynamic in his body language. And so when you take that actor's movement and apply it to a mostly realistic looking character in CG through motion capture, that level of exaggeration he brings to his performance is the extra something that the movement requires, in tandem with the slight exaggeration of the visual appearance of the character, so that they feel balanced and intrinsically accepted and we are not off-put by it. Comment quiz! Have you seen any of the Image Movers digital films? And what is your opinion of them? Do you have a favorite? I'd love to know in the comments below. Remember, all the cool kids comment.
Obviously, motion capture has not gone away, and it did eventually become commonly understood that motion capture performers require that they add an additional level of exaggerated movement in order that their motion be applied directly to an animated character and have it feel appropriate. As you can see in these video examples of motion capture actors, they are ensuring that their actions and gestures are broad and read easily. In fact, in this video, the motion capture actress Sakana shows side-by-side -side examples of a more realistic but less dynamic movement compared to an exaggerated movement for animation. Not only will the movement on the right feel better when applied to the character, but the movement in and of itself has more appeal because there's more interest and charm in her movement, and it makes it easier for us to understand what the character's attitude and emotions are. Andy Serkis, who was famously responsible for playing Gollum in the Lord of the Rings trilogy and Caesar in the Planet of the Apes franchise, also intrinsically understands how much additional exaggeration is necessary in the performance for it to mean less plussing for the animators to do on the back end. Understand that even with this exaggeration, almost all motion capture needs to be cleaned up to some extent by an artist, and it almost never comes through exactly the way you want it. But there's no question that someone like Jack Black, who also moves dynamically and with great exaggeration, would probably have his movement translate to an animated character and have it look appropriate and feel satisfying. Stunt performers are commonly used as motion capture actors, and this makes perfect sense because of the fact that they know how to communicate non-verbally and understand the need to ensure clarity in their movement and action. But how exaggerated should the movement be? Well, I believe that depends entirely on exactly how exaggerated the movement is and how exaggerated the character looks, and so the movement should be exaggerated accordingly. But a general rule of thumb could be thinking of an actor playing to the back row, as the old expression goes. Which means making sure that the movement you are doing will read clearly to an audience member at the back of the theater who will have more difficulty hearing the dialogue and needs to clearly understand the character's motivations. We will be talking about exaggeration in more detail when we get to number 10 in our 12 Principles of Animation series. And so to make sure that you don't miss that video in that series or any of the other videos that we post here on Animation Trainers, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and switch that bell. Or better still, sign up for our weekly one-hour live animation feedback and over-the-shoulder fishbowl sessions at patreon.com forward slash animation trainers. You can join our students, our trainees, and our beloved patrons who have my eternal thanks for their support of this channel. Or would you like to have a private session with me where we can discuss how to improve your animation skills working with me directly one-on-one? -on -one? Then please visit our website at animationtrainers.com and schedule a session with me. My name is Ron Freeman, and I hope that we will see you for our next video here at Animation Trainers. In the meantime, keep it moving.